The community of Cedar Creek is right outside of Louisville and along the Platte River. As the water levels continue to rise, Cedar Creek is close to flooding over. Some of the residents in the area have spent the day stacking sandbags along the roads to prevent these homes right along the river from flooding. Uh, sandbagging started yesterday. Um, I think yesterday morning, probably around uh, mid-morning, about 9 o'clock, I think there was a call and there was a group. I've heard, I wasn't here for the most of the day yesterday, but I've heard about 100 people showed up yesterday also uh, and did a lot of work. And then we started early this morning, about 8 o'clock again. We're limited a little bit. We're about out of sandbags for the time. We've got the perimeter on the road pretty well up, so it may be time to just kind of wait it out and see what the river's going to do next. Just going around the river and seeing it and seeing the levels come up and having been here and done this before, um, it's just kind of a call out from the community to everybody lend a hand. And as you can see, a lot of people show up. There was about 40 or so people helping out Friday with the sandbagging process. We talked to people in town. One person opened up their general store to help out those with supplies today. Reporting in Cedar Creek, Nebraska, Phil Bergman, 3 News Now. The Platte River waters are raging here near Highway 64. It has breached the Union Dyke in this area and is pushing towards the city of Valley. Valley, King Lake and Waterloo are under a flash flood warning until 1015 Saturday morning because of the breach. People are trying to get out of the area with urgency. I think we'll be fine. We live kind of out in the country, but I don't know. It all depends what's going to happen and what breaks and then it could all just be crazy. I think it's smart to everybody's trying to get out and do what they need to do. Water was over Highway 64 near Ginger Cove and Ginger Woods by late morning. A voluntary evacuation was issued for Valley residents. It's almost frantic because I think, especially over here near Valley, it came up so fast. Rescue crews were stationed off Highway 275 to help rescue people in King Lake. Some we spoke to were trying to get their animals off their rural land, but instead unlocked the gates because they couldn't get them out safely. But now we've got animals there, uh, two donkeys, uh, a bunch of chickens and ducks, uh, 15 alpacas, um, and hopefully they made it through the night um, and hopefully they got to higher ground. First time I've been on a rescue effort and really felt hopeless. There's, you know, we can't put ourselves at risk or um, let the adopters put themselves at risk to go back in and get the animals. The floodwaters continue to push towards Valley as the levels stay high. The Platte River Landing was supposed to open on April 1st. It's unclear if that will happen. Emergency personnel attempting to rescue a family from rising floodwaters inside their home needed rescuing themselves Thursday night. Just after 9 p.m., both emergency responders' boats capsized and the crew was stuck in floodwaters. Multiple agencies, including Waterloo, Arlington, and UTAN assisted, along with two National Guard Black Hawk helicopters. It proved to be one of several rescues Waterloo Fire assisted with on Thursday. We were with them right before when they rescued three men from flooding in Douglas County. We put um, several rescue personnel's life at risk to go into uh, floodwaters to be able to rescue the three uh, gentlemen that were stuck out in the water. All seven people were taken to the Fremont Airport, then to the hospital where they were treated for hypothermia. Once the helicopters reached the family who initially needed rescue, they refused to leave their home. Rescue crews busy saving lives. This south of the Platte River near Plattsmith. Residents along Beach Road said the waters were rising quickly. These are about two foot an hour. At least six people, including a child, are rescued from homes in the area. They also got their pets out. Yeah, it's pretty deep. Yeah. yeah. Glad to have the people help you out. Oh, yeah, thankful. Plattsmouth Fire and Rescue helped a woman at the Moorhead Island Recreational Area as well, east of downtown by the Missouri River. The city had to evacuate their wastewater treatment plant. Nebraska Department of Roads is monitoring the Platte River on Highway 75 to see if water levels rise all the way to the top of the bridge. This is Nebraska Strong. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. A lot of people are waiting for the All right. Dozens of pilots donating their planes, fuel, and time to bring supplies from Millard to Fremont. They're stranded, they're stuck, they, they don't have any other options. and be able to come with friends to ferry stuff up and get people home. It's just kind of the best of humanity, I guess. Jim Davis caught a donated flight to Omaha to see a doctor. A lot of the doctors can't make it to the Fremont Hospital, and uh, so the only way I could get my treatment was to come here today. Davis describes Fremont as a muddy island, and his house? Oh, my house burned down two days before the flood. Oh. I haven't had all 
all bad luck. I just haven't been able to think any good luck lately. Jug of water in here. Volunteers on the ground at the Millard Airport collected donations from the community and loaded them on planes. We got passengers coming on okay. board. Okay. We'll go from there, okay? All right. Crystal Sandoval is a medication aide at an assisted living home in Fremont. They're probably doing good. They're they're in good hands. She's flying into work to relieve colleagues who've been on duty since Friday. Because that's my job. With her suitcase in tow, she isn't sure when she'll make it back. And when some of the roads open up, I guess. I don't know. It's only a 20-minute flight, and Mayfield has made dozens of them the past two days. Yeah, and you put yourself in their shoes. They, they don't have any options. There's no roadways in there. They're waterlocked in there. and So, yeah, it's a pretty desperate feeling for them. And this is why they call it Nebraska Strong. Thank you. That's what we're here for. It's been several days since the flood water has gone down here in North Bend, but the work for a community and business owners out here is just beginning. Sean Jewell's home wasn't affected by the floods, but that wasn't the case here. Right away you could tell the door was caved in on the end and we had about 18 inches of water, so we knew <laughs> that it was bad. His small business was ruined. All the lower end of the drywall got ruined there. It, uh, some stuff had floated around and pulled monitors off of the desks. Um, computer towers, it was two and a half foot deep on the computer towers. And of course they were underwater. And to make matters worse, Sean had just begun construction to add more office space. It's rough, yeah, you know, the emotions are up and down. Schools are closed and a once busy business district now sits empty. There are even more issues. Sewer and water systems are still offline. You cannot flush your toilets. You cannot put anything down the drain in the house. Anything you put down a drain is going to come back up in your neighbor's house. Public Information Officer Nathan Arneal says it could be another 24 hours until they know if the water is safe to drink. And with the possibility of more rain later in the week, the city isn't in the clear just yet. So we're asking people and businesses to hang on, th don't start throwing away your sandbags yet, keep them in place because you don't know what the next couple days are going to bring. The city is now asking for volunteers to come here and help in any way they can. If you want to bring a donation, you can drop them off right here at the school. Reporting in North Bend, Sydney Gray, 3 News Now. This is just your basic kitchen. I think if you know what you're doing in the kitchen, you can make anything work. Nothing fancy here at the Christian Church of Waterloo. I think that it bakes more evenly maybe on the bottom row. But enough for Carrie Messenger to get the job done. I grew up in the kitchen from the time I was like five years old and until I was a teenager, we were always preparing foods on big scale. Carrie the cook isn't from Waterloo. Oh, Missy! But her friends are. And when she heard they needed help. Carrie lost her job last week. And she's like, you know what? I just want to go cook for people. We said, we're there. We're when Carrie said, I need a kitchen, I said, I know where I got one. It may not be a kitchen that you're used to having, but it's a kitchen. Over 36 hours, the basic appliances have cranked out 650 meals. We've been doing meatloaf. We've done um, homemade cinnamon rolls and chili. Serving three meals a day to a community in need. It's, it's just overwhelming. It really is. Frank Qureshi hasn't had a hot meal in days. So it's great. I've been eating cookies and crackers for the last couple days. So this is very nourishing. For him, Carrie's food meant more than a lunch. You know who your real friends are? They've been calling me for to help me and everything. But I found out I got friends that I don't even know. It's just hope. You know, we're serving meals, but we're also serving a good, healthy dose of compassion and love and hope. And in a time of struggle... Yeah, you want some foil in that, babe? Carrie's been a messenger for the people in this area. What she has done in this week is she's instilled hope back in people that were hopeless. Hi, I didn't give you a hug, by the way. Reporting in Waterloo... She is pretty special. Oh, stop. <laughs> she is pretty special. Phil Bergman, 3 News Now. levels have been continuing to rise since we got here about 4:30 this morning. Again, all those people who have been driving uh, on old Lincoln Highway, 
you guys should really turn around because it's it's going to be nearly it's impossible to make it over when here. when many of the residents could get back into the homes that are flooded. Many of them have been deemed. You can see wall. just how covered everything is with water and the water is rushing really fast. This area is very quiet, uh, not just because the hour of the day, but because no one can be over here. I just worry about the people that their house is just still full and they've lost everything that they own. It's heartbreaking to know that, you know, people have lost animals, um, lost belongings that they've had their entire life. rough yeah you know the emotions are up and down you just you go through times where you just keep smiling and you're thankful that everybody's okay and you know but then you have those low points too where you <laughs> yeah you don't know how how to handle it it's been several days since the flood water has gone down here in north bend but the work for a community and business owners out here is just beginning The property manager says that most of the water that entered the trailer park entered through this storm drain. Now, as you can see behind me, there's still just a little bit of water left, but most of it has receded at this point. Now, they say that about the two out of the 285 trailers in the lot, only about four to five of them had water go inside of the home. You know, there's so much help. There's so much hope. Just pray.